So now that we've looked through a fairly complete example, a couple actually ex complete examples using parallel streams. We looked at the parallel stream, search with parallel streams class. We looked at the search with parallel splitterator class. We're going to take another look later today at yet another example, which is a parallel streams version of the image stream gang program, which is really cool. But what we're going to do first is we're going to talk about when to use parallel streams and when not to use parallel streams. And as you'll see, there's some situations where it makes a lot of sense to use it, other situations where it doesn't. So first and foremost, parallelism is not a panacea. It doesn't solve all your performance problems. And one of the first things you have to recognize is that a parallel program always does more work than a non-parallel program. So what does that mean? Well, one of the things that a parallel program needs to do is it needs to partition the original task or the overall task to be solved into a bunch of subtasks. And that obviously takes some time. So you've got to split things up using splitterators and the uh, stream support dot stream method and so on and so forth. Next, it needs to process all the subtasks. And of course, this is typically all that a sequential program would do. A sequential program would simply do the work, whereas a parallel stream has to start by first breaking things up into chunks. And then the third thing that a parallel stream needs to do is it needs to combine all the results of the subtasks together. And obviously, if it's done with a non-concurrent collector, for example, then it'll combine them. If it's done with a concurrent collector, it'll kind of be done when it's finished running. But the point is, you've got to accumulate all the various pieces and put them back together. And that takes some time. So a sequential program clearly doesn't need to do steps one and three. It only needs to do step two. So whatever happens, you're going to have some additional work to be done for a parallel program. And therefore, a parallel stream will sometimes be useful, but not always. And in particular, we'll see that there are certain circumstances under which it doesn't make sense to apply a parallel stream. We'll talk about that after we talk about when to apply it, however. So the trick here is you've got to understand when to use it, and it's kind of up to you to figure this out. There is some nice guidance here in an article by my colleague Doug Lee talking about when to use a parallel stream, under what circumstances to use a parallel stream. So we'll spend a little time talking about that here. So parallel streams are most useful under certain conditions. Not all conditions, certain conditions. Uh, in particular, when the behaviors in your program have certain characteristics. One thing that makes a big impact on making a parallel stream work effectively is for the tasks or subtasks that you're running to be independent of each other. And that's often called embarrassingly parallel. So remember, an embarrassingly parallel program has a bunch of tasks with little or no dependency on each other and no need to communicate between the tasks in order to complete them, and you don't need to share the results between them. Everything runs independently. And a classic example, as I've talked about many times, is uh, you know, doing your wash with lots of different washers and dryers. We've seen a bunch of examples of this so far. So searching for phrases in a list of input strings, that's clearly one that we've looked at over and over again. Uh, we'll also look at some stuff for downloading and processing images like you're doing for your assignments. That's another example of that as well. So with the search stream gang program, there's a bunch of different variants of this that chop the world up into little pieces under different arrangements. So there's one version called uh, search with parallel streams phrases, where it searched for each phrase in parallel, but nothing else. There's search for each input string in parallel. There's the uh, search with parallel splitterator one, where we search for the input string and the input phrase. And also, the input string is chunked up into pieces, like we talked about last time with our, our parallel splitterator. And that's the most aggressive of these things, because it, it does them all, right? And it, as we saw, it performed the best. But the reason why it performs well ultimately co comes down to this issue of independent tasks that have no, no relationship to each other other than that they run on different parts of the input. Another characteristic that leads to good behavior for parallel computing and parallel streams is when the operations you're doing in parallel are computationally expensive. So when you have a behavior or behaviors that you apply to each of the elements in the input stream, 
takes a long time to run. We'll see what long time could be here in a second. But something that operates very quickly probably isn't going to get you much of a win from parallel computing. Because remember, you have to set things up in the first place. Yet another dimension, that another important characteristic that leads to good behavior is if you have lots of elements to apply the computations to. So if you have lots of elements and you want to run them all in parallel to do them all at the same time, that's going to give you a bigger win typically than if you just have a handful. Um, especially when the sources of the data can be split efficiently and evenly. So you chop them up into even-sized chunks. You have them run in parallel. The computations take a while to run. And you've got lots of data to work on. That's kind of the ideal situation. And in fact, this type of a model has actually been codified in the form of something that Brian Getz calls the NQ model. It's kind of a strange name. N is pretty clear. N is the number of data elements to process per, per core, per thread. Whereas Q is a quantification of how CPU intensive the processing is. So in his heuristic, if N times Q is greater than, I think it's 10,000, just to kind of pick a random number, um, then he says that's good. If, if you have n times q larger than 10,000, then that's a good sign. You'll probably get a win from parallel streams or parallel processing. If n times q is less than 10,000, eh, maybe not so much. Um, and that's obviously sort of a, a swag, as they say. But it gives you an idea of something. So you'd expect better performance the higher the n is, the more elements, and the higher the q is, the more processing that's done per element. And that, that kind of makes some sense. And the reason for that, of course, is that that offsets the time required to split things up into chunks and then accumulate and combine the results back together at the end. So as we saw, searching for phrases that match in the works of Shakespeare, fairly computationally intensive to do that searching. And there's you know, potentially lots of phrases. There's lots of input. Lots of works of Shakespeare, so you're probably going to get a win. Another kind of obvious thing, uh, but it bears repeating, is if you have many cores. If you only have a single core machine, you're probably not going to get much, if any, performance boost from parallel processing, because there's only one thing to do. Uh, just like if there's only one of you, then you're probably going to have a hard time offloading the work, whereas if you have a group of people, they can work together. So to kind of summarize this discussion, under the right conditions, parallelism in general and Java parallel streams in particular can scale up nicely on modern multi-core and many-core processors. And we see that here with these results that we talked about before, where a sequential version takes a certain amount of time, and then different parallel versions run better because they have more work that can run in parallel. OK, so that's just a quick overview of some ideas about when to consider applying parallel streams.